pedestal. And to fall from the pedestal means I'm back to that original experience where I experienced rejection. And I'm, like in our previous conversation we were talking about, being put aside, you know, no longer being important, no longer being seen. And of course, one of the sad things that has happened now in the last three years, the suicide rate has gone up between 25 to 30%. Because if, 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 you, if your defence ceases to work, if you no longer can get recognition through what you achieve, and now you're rubbished, and you're rejected, and people are ridiculing you, you now will plummet into quite a deep depression. And you are now in, at a high risk of suicide, because my life is over. Mm. I mean, it's, you know, it's interesting that, you know, a high percentage of men die quite soon after uh, they retire. And they'd say to me, now obviously before they die, <laughs> you don't have those powers just yet <laughs> right. they'll say to me I have nothing left to live for uh -huh. and I said but you haven't lived because you need to live for yourself not live for work if you live, if you live for work right, then you totally forgot yourself and you've totally neglected yourself you, you were addicted to work you only got seen through work but you need to be seen for yourself and this is the first day of your life all your working life was actually a slow dying. They weren't yourself. living at all. They weren't living at all. Mm -hmm. They weren't living. And so I have a lot of compassion, you know, uh, for all these bank managers and <clears throat> who have dropped hugely from their pedestals. Mm -hmm. And we saw it with the politicians. Mm -hmm. My God, I mean, if we didn't riot in the streets, we rioted at the polls. Yes, we? absolutely. We very well yeah. and very maturely. It yeah. was a good way to riot. And, but what I'm concerned of, how do we give the bankers, the politicians, the property developers, how do we give them the opportunities to look at what was unconsciously going on for them, that they blocked out seeing the reality, seeing what lots of other people saw, even the dogs in the streets seemed to know about it, that there was going to be a crash. But these people in top positions actually denied the reality. Mm -hmm. And it must have been because of very deep emotional processes, mm -hmm. very deep defensive processes, that their sense of self and their identity was tied up with success or with work or with wealth. And they identified so closely with their own job, with their own success, that if that was seen to fail in any way, it meant that they failed. So they denied any potential or any oncoming of crash. Course, because you see, if you always had to be the best and always on top, you don't take criticism at all. You, you can't bear criticism because it means you're no longer the best, you're no longer on top. And so you, you, you totally unconsciously really deny any responsibility for what had happened unless there's safety, unless somebody can hold you in safety and say, tell me your story and what has brought you to a place where you, you have confused yourself with success. I mean, success addiction has become one of our most common addictions, particularly during the tiger, tiger economy. Mm. 